Proverbs chapter 17. And great lessons that, that Solomon gives us. And just verses. Never mind a whole chapter. Individual verses. And when it comes to studying the Bible, and I'm never in a hurry. I want to get as much as we can from the scriptures, from a verse, before we move on to the next verse. Better is a dry morsel, piece of toast, uh, a cracker, and quietness therewith. Peace. Having crackers in peace. Then a house full of sacrifices. Abundant. Of offering plenty and plus. Above the tithe. Sacrifices is what you bring to God. A house full of sacrifices. Abundant. It's definitely over the time. Which means God has also blessed you excellently. But. Therewith then a household is sacrificed with strife. God could give it to you all. And you could return back to God. The 10% and the offerings and the peace offerings. And all that you would give to God. But if there's strife in the house, fighting, arguments, trouble, they better have a dry cracker than peace, with peace. Now, I don't know when Solomon wrote these Proverbs out. I mean, the date is, is B.C. 1000, but this is the guy who had a thousand wives, many children. I can't imagine what his household would be like. I mean, you can't say with a thousand wives, every single wife was lovely, great, and wonderful, and grand. I'm not one to bicker and pick on and joke about marriage. I take marriage seriously. But, I mean, let's face the fact, a thousand wives of other countries, non-Israelites, they worship all kinds of gods. <clears throat> A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame. That's an impossibility. At least in the realm of life. A servant does not rule over a, a, the child. Unless that child has caused shame. That child has become deplorable, depicted among his parents. You know what? I'm going to give what I was going to give you. I'm going to give it to. I'm going to give it to my servant. And there are faithful servants in the Bible of Eliezer, Genesis 15, and you find Joseph, faithful servant. shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. That usually didn't happen either. Usually the inheritance of the father went to the children, not the servants. Sometimes the servants were part of the inheritance. A finding pot for silver, a furnace for gold, this is means of purifying silver and gold. You heat it up, you put it in the flames, you scoop off the scum. But the Lord trieth, Genesis 22, God don't try. The Lord trieth the heart to see where your heart stands. In Genesis 22, to see that Abraham loved and obeyed God more than his son. 
and to see in our life our successes and our failures. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips that lie, steal, deceive. And a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. So a wicked man and a liar comes usually from one source of listening. The false lips, the false witness, the liar, and the naughty tongue. Again, we're back to the lips, we're back to the tongue. Over and over in James chapter 3, an entire chapter given to the tongue. Jesus said, every idle word man shall speak shall give an account thereof. Whoso mocketh. And in Proverbs chapter 1, it speaks about people who mock wisdom. Whoso mocketh the poor, reproaches his maker, capital M, creator, God, the one who made the guy poor. Run that back to 1633, the lot cast in the lap to hold disposing thereof is of the Lord. I lost all my money at the casino. Market the poor reproaches his maker. Well, guess who made you poor? Guess who made you lose? Guess who doesn't make you have enough money? Jesus said the poor you'll have always with you. No government is going to eliminate the poor people when the Bible says you're not going to. And when you make fun and, and, and mistreat and deceive and rank upon the poor people you're making fun of God. God takes it personally. He that is glad at calamity shall not be punished. How they got what they deserve. Glad it happened to them. Be careful. Now there's a difference between glad and calamities and then stating a fact. When I say that these hurricanes are coming and the west coast is on fire and things that are happening I, i'm not glad that they're happening i'm just saying listen we're in the end time it is god trying to wake up the world before the the, the coming of jesus christ of the rapture of his church in the seven years tribulation period the Antichrist, god's trying to get a tent now that don't make me happy that makes me want to go out more and pray more for lost souls. But there are people out there when something bad happens, something evil happens. <laughs> and God says, you'll go unpunished. Children's children, grandchildren, are the crown of the old man. Verse 31 in chapter 16, the hoary head, the white or gray hair is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. Children, children are the crown of the old men. We are in a world, we are in a nation where children are aborted frequently. The Bible says children are a gift of God and they're aborted. They are left to defend themselves. They're put on the market. They're actually born, they're killed. China, last time I knew, had a one child uh, uh, mandate. And then if that child didn't, wasn't a, a, a male, that child would be abused, and even the mother, because they're looking for that male. How a nation treats its children gets God's attention. And when we're aborting children, we're misfeeding children, and we're not directing children, we're not bringing the Jesus. Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. And we got children that are fatherless. And we got children that are not being corrected according to the Bible. God says, you don't love your children. I'm sorry, but don't expect God to bless you. The 
Again, the Bible says children are a gift of God. And the glory of the children are their fathers. We've got generations of children today, they don't even know who their father is. So that defiles the Bible. Excellent speech, there's that mouth again. Bible has much to say about your mouth. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. A fool can't have excellent speech, according to the Bible. He's going to have folly. He's going to have foolishness. How many fools are in our private and public and college and seminary education buildings? And the Bible says what they say. That's the Bible, that's not me. Much less do lying lips a prince. A prince is a government official. You would say a politician. And a lying politician is worse than a fool who can't speak well. I'll leave that one alone. But you know, there's two organizations, two occupations that I can think of that are known for lying and deceiving. Used car salesmen and politicians. Look what the Bible said. A prince was, was under the king. So, a gift, and we read about a gift the other night. This is not a bribe. This is a true gift is a precious stone, a gemstone, in the eyes of him that have it. Whithersoever he turneth, it prospers. A gift is a good thing. It's a valuable thing. But a bribe is something different. Jacob's entire life, if you read about Jacob, man, he had a gift for everybody for everyone. To try to, to, try to get him out of trouble. That's not the only reason to get a gift for somebody. I mean, the standard joke for a husband and wife, you get flowers because she's mad at you. There's other reasons to get a gift. Just because you love them. Anniversary gift. I'm not for birthdays and Christmas. How about you just in the story, you know, she says, or he says, man, I like that. You do? Yeah. Okay, I'll buy it for you. What's the occasion? Why does there have to be an occasion? Just want to get it for you. How about yeah? You know, you're tired and you so we'll, we'll go out to eat tonight. Just relax, sit down, and we'll go out. It's a gift. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. There it is. God loves you and he wants to cover your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. And humanly speaking, if you've done somebody wrong, ah, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't mention it again. That's love. That's forgiveness. Now, forgetfulness, that could be another thing. It's hard to forget. But forgiveness, I eh, don't mention and we've got to learn with our sins, when we confess our sins, we got to stop bringing them to God. They've already been confessed. They've already been forgiven. And God's love, he's covered it. It's the sins that we have not confessed. But he that repeateth a matter separates very friends. 1628, the forward man soweth strife and the whisper separates chief friends. See what you did to me? Now that's not God because God, if it's under the blood, will not bring that sin to remembrance again. It is to, it is a people gathering of people. Oh, you, know, you do what you did to me. Some will give you the date and the time and the place. We 
We ought to be forgiving of others. Uh, the Lord's Prayer that they call the Lord's Prayer, but it's not the Lord's Prayer. He says you got to forgive the trespasses of others so God will forgive your trespasses. That's what they say the Lord's Prayer. It's not. Lord's Prayer is John 17, I think it is. Reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. That's chastening. That's correction. That's whipping. And you can whip a fool all you want. You can correct a fool all you want. You can put him in jail all you want. He's not going to be corrected. And you waste government money for people who are not going to change. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Always constantly no regard to others, the law, and authority. That's an evil man. If a man's constantly ending up in jail, He's an evil man. I don't care if he's saved. That's why people don't read the Bible. It hits them. Are you in any form and shape rebelling against God, rebelling against somebody else? You're an evil man. Thank God we can repent and not only repent, but also get rid of that sin. Therefore, in, in, in lieu of a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. You're going to get some bad news. For your rebellion. Your rebelling, your sin is going to cause evil, a consequence of sin. Let a bear rob the reasoning of her wealth. That's her little baby bear. Let mama bear not find her, her baby cub. And I have been told you do not be in that area. That is one vicious bear looking for her cub. Let a bear robbed of her cubs meet a man. No, you don't. You don't want that. Rather than a fool and his folly. Get, get mauled. And killed by a bear rather than being a fool, what Solomon said. Wow. I think that cuts to the chase. Go get a violent death rather than just keep on living to be a fool, which you won't be corrected with a hundred strikes. Of all the things, I think there's only one, one or two times that the Bible ever speaks a good about the fool. Only one or two. And we got many fools to come across. Oh, verse 13. 2020. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. You know what America is doing? And you're going to have a great revival in America? That verse says, no, you're not. We are letting people out of prison. We are allowing people to, to terrorize our city. We're letting criminals run rampant. We're letting adultery run free. We're letting sin have a free license. Okay? Okay. The evil is only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. And if you want to see it in practice, take your sister England and just see where she is today. Take our sister Judah and see where she went. The beginning of strife, a fight, argument, is as when one letteth out water. And the picture is you got a you got a container of water and you let it out. Gather that water back. You can't. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. 
Don't get in arguments. Don't get in situations. Just like Paul told the, told the Corinthian church about lawsuits. Just take the loss and be peaceful. You're going to get in an argument with, with, with your wife or somebody at church and say, you know what? All right, I'm wrong. Make peace. That's not even about it. That's not even good about it. Because you're going to say things like that water let up, and you're not going to be able to take it back. There's going to be things that's going to happen that you're going to rem You may forgive, I said, but you can't forget many times. Oh, how we got terrible memories when we walk through a doorway. Why did I go in that room? But we can remember that person doing us harm 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So in the aspect of spouses, family, church, work, if there's going to be an argument, a fight, just get it over with. Make peace whatever you can, however you can, and just forgive. And don't bring it back up. That was what, verse number nine. And don't whisper 1628. And don't hold no grudges and don't get bitter. And where you are wrong, you've got to apologize. Because let me tell you about one person, that person never apologized and just never forgot and never forgot. And I could not forget because there was no apology and I kept doing it and kept doing it. Now, if they apologize, Peter walks up to Jesus. Well, my brother, you know, uh, how many times do I forgive him? Seven. And Peter was sat there counting. Oh, you've got three more. And Jesus like, no, seven, 70 times seven. Now you're going to lose count. <laughs> you don't count. Don't seek vengeance. Don't give it back. Don't retaliate. Make the peace. And we're going to stop there. That's halfway through the verses of this chapter. I said, I'm, I'm not in a rush. Not with Proverbs. I mean, there's going to be some Proverbs where it's not individual verses. It, it's a whole section of verse. But right now, I mean, it's each individual verse. And we've digested many things of 14 verses that we can look at in our life to tomorrow night when we look at 14 more verses. But take what we've read and take what we studied to say, where am I right with God? And where am I wrong with God? And then tonight seems to be, what is my what is our relationship to the people around me? And don't get any contention. 